Hello and welcome to today's episode. So today we're joined by Sarah Hammond. Welcome, Sarah. Hello. And Sarah is our marketing manager at Warrior One, and she's often on the other side of the camera. But today we've brought her to this side of the camera <laughs> purely because we're going to unlock a few of the best marketing practices we feel are really good practices for yoga teachers. So this episode is for you if potentially you've just done your 200 hour yoga teacher training and you're looking for inspiration ideas of how to market yourself as a teacher. Potentially you've had a break from teaching and you're coming back and you're like, you know what, I need to get some classes or pump up my classes or whatever it is you're looking for. Or thirdly, potentially you've been teaching for a long time, you have a really good schedule, you offer you know, workshops or trainings or retreats or whatever it is and you're just wanting to market yourself a little bit more. So before we jump into our practices, we're going to talk a little bit to Sarah about your history, where you've been teaching, how long you've been teaching for, and your role as marketing manager at Warrior One. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I've been teaching for just over 10 years. Wow. Which sounds crazy when you say it out loud, <laughs> feeling my age right now. Um, and my background from really early on with teaching has always been doing studio management. Um, I used to be a studio manager. Um, and since I've come to Warrior One, I have really enjoyed niching down to focus on all things marketing. So I teach at Morty Alec and our Mornington studios, um, but my marketing role spreads across all three studios and um, is everything to do with all of our uh, social media, our EDM, our email marketing, this podcast, um, and our website as well. So that is what my day-to-day -day is. You know that. You're yes. my day-to-day. -day. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I know Sarah has such a passion for it. And I say in another podcast that this was actually an area that I used to do within the business. It was something that I really loved too. And then when Sarah came on board, what well, it was two years ago now, right? Yeah, almost two years. Mm. I actually had this aha moment where I was like, oh my God, Sarah's better than me. Like she's doing the job better than I was doing it. And sometimes that's the case because I was a little bit too close to it at times, but you really have such a passion for video content, um, marketing and, and making sure I guess we're getting the message across. So, hmm. so nice to have you. Yeah, it's going to be good to get into our favorite marketing practices. Yes. So, so this is things that we talk to our teachers about, but also our teacher trainees. So mm -hmm. let's jump into the first one, which I'm a big, big fan of. Yes. Our favorite marketing practice maybe is having a dedicated Instagram page. So something that yes. is separate to your personal Instagram page, a place where you can talk about your offering, your classes as a teacher. Yeah, for sure. So important. So important. We often talk about this on the teacher training and a lot of people say, oh, I don't want to have another Instagram page to manage. But separating it is so important because I feel like in 2023 and, and forward, it's your CV. You know, if, if you go for a job at a studio, that's what they're going to look at. They're going to pull up your Instagram handle and have a look at where you're teaching and, you know, maybe a couple of practices that you're doing um, and see your vibe. And they're going to often choose it or potentially trial you from that point onwards. So to kind of weed out, you know, you're having a glass of wine on a Friday night or, you know, your social life is really important. Mm. And while we support that, it's not something you need on your resume. Oh, I love a glass of wine, <laughs> even on a weeknight, but... <laughs> It won't appear potentially on your social media page and that's okay. So the question is, we hear a lot, how often should I post? What would you say to that? I think it is totally up to you, but pick something that you can comfortably maintain. So if with your life, with your teaching schedule, with your work outside of teaching yoga, maybe you can only post on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Great. Stick with that then at least you know every Tuesday and Thursday you're committing to those two posts a week. Maybe it's every day, but it doesn't have to be every day. It's yes. just got to be something that you can comfortably maintain. Yes, mm, 100%. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm guilty of that too. I think to myself, oh, this week I'm going to be really good with my social media and post every day. And then I literally post like once a month. <laughs> so it is, we get it. It's so difficult, but that consistency for your followers really, really helps. Mm. What about what to post? I think that's the next big question people have. They create the separate Instagram page 
and maybe you're thinking about your scheduling, but then it's like, what do I want to post? So we recommend working out what your pillars are, for want of a better word. Yes. What do you actually want to share? One that is a great one to start with is your schedule. Where are you teaching every single week? What times, what days? Put it up as regularly as you can. Yes. It's a big one. Yeah, stories are really good for that because mm. a lot of people are potentially not going through the feed, but they're going through the stories. So I feel that's a good one for stories. And what about one. for the Instagram feed? What do you recommend with pillars? I think having some practical tips. So think about what you're passionate about. Uh, as a teacher, what do you really love to teach in your classes? Are you doing a breakdown of Ujjayi breastwork? Are you doing a how-to on Warrior Two or three tips for beginners in Downward Facing Dog? Something that you would teach, but also make it something that you're quite passionate about. You already, you already teach it. It's just about sharing it on yes. your page. And it's uh, a value add for your students. You know, you're providing some really valuable information. I love that. Something that I heard once and I try and do with my social media is always make it educational, entertaining and value adding. So thinking of those three things, is this post X, Y, Z? Is it entertaining? Is it value adding or is it educational? And making sure that you kind of adhere to that. So you've got mm. something positive to say. Yeah. Your post should be hitting one, of if those not three. more than one of those three. Uh, the other thing that you might like to have as one of your pillars is if you're doing an offering outside of your regular classes. So this is like if you're running a workshop, if you've mm. got an upcoming retreat, things that are not your regular class schedules, but people that come to your classes would maybe love to do with you. Yes. Mm. I also love, and I don't see this a lot, but I also love it when teachers go on their Instagram and explain what kind of teacher they are. If you come to my class, you'll get this experience. Well, this is what I'm focusing on this week. You know, I might be um, focusing on strengthening the back line of the body and this is why, right? And then you can have an educational piece to that, but you can also then, you know, promote your classes and say, come along and this is what we'll, we'll work on. A lot of teachers do Warrior One, like a four week series. So they might work on, you know, give me an example. On I'm week doing one. the chakras at the moment. Perfect. Yeah. Great example. So that way you might be then threading that through into your social media. So it kind of all makes sense. And then you've got this beautiful story and connection through what you're teaching in person to then what you're showing online. I mm. think that's really lovely. Yeah, it's speaking about what you provide and it's you know showing a little bit more of, of who you are as a teacher and people respond so well to that. Um, I love that. Yeah. Yes. So number two, after you've created a dedicated yoga page, yours is Sarah Hammond Yoga. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mine is just your name. Mine's my Nova Rosea. And it's funny because I had, I got Instagram when Instagram first came out and I was able to get that. And now I'm just going to hold on to it for dear life. But we recommend it to be similar to your name with the word yoga or not, depending. Um, but obviously it's getting harder and harder to get dedicated page names because everything's taken. It is. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Number two. Uh, having a dedicated website, it can be a one-page website. A one-page website landing is page. fantastic. A landing page, a mobile-friendly landing page as well, <laughs> I would like to stress. Please make sure that it looks great on mobile because that's how most of us look at websites. Yes, 90% or something like that. Yeah, something like that. Have some beautiful photography of you. Please show your face, not just mm. you in a child's pose. We really do want to see your lovely face. Have your weekly schedule, yes. perhaps some links uh, to booking, making it easy for people to book your classes, see what your timetable is for the week. And then if you've got any other offerings, if you want to include a bio, you can, but just having all of the relevant info there, one page and something that you can easily update. Totally. That is a big thing that we are always on updating our website. Our website at Warrior One gets updated every Daily. single day, multiple times a day. Whatever you put on your website, make sure that you're comfortable updating it and that you update it when your schedule changes. Yeah, for sure. And if you wanted an, a next layer of, of your web page, I think another really great thing is you could um, embed some videos, some YouTube videos. Mm. So similar to what you've done on your Instagram, if you want to educate your, your students on how to do Ujjayi breath 
or maybe you want to give them a quick, you know, five minute class for after they've done a run or something like that, depending on what your kind of niche or passion is, you could have a couple of YouTube videos on your website too. Yeah. That's really, again, something we don't commonly actually see, but I think that's just another layer of providing your students with the support for their practice, maybe off the mat in the studio environment and at home. And I wouldn't recommend them to be long practices at all, unless it's obviously a, an online studio that there's a paywall in front of and they're paying for that. But I do think short practices that add value, going back to what we talked about with the social media, can be a really, really beautiful thing to offer them. Mm, that's such a good idea. And if no one's, if someone hasn't been to your class before, but they're on your website, it gives them insight into who you are as a teacher immediately. Yeah. Mm. So Warrior One has a YouTube and that's what we do. We have a couple of short practices and some little beginners flows and things like that for our students. And if you didn't know, you can have a look. Mm. Um, and the second thing we do is we, of course, put these podcast episodes up. Um, we, of course, put our member test testimonials, our member yeah. testimonials up. So if you have those as well, if you have any testimonials from people um, that are video content, you can definitely add those to your website as well. Yeah, perfect. Really good stuff to add in. Yes. Mm. Last but definitely not least and my favourite style of marketing. Yes. And one that gets overlooked or not talked about as much. Yes. We talk about it. We do. We rate it. <laughs> Hopefully you rate it. Word of mouth. Chatting to your students, the people that come and do class with you, before and after your class. Mm -hmm. There are a few ways that you can do it. At, if you're teaching at a dedicated studio, like if you were teaching at Warrior One, um, and I do this, this is something that I do every single week. Mm. If I'm covering a class, I'll you know let people know when I'm teaching regularly at that studio. It's been so great practicing with you today. I'm usually here on a Wednesday evening, 5, 15 p.m. slow flow. I would love to see you then. Um, so we can have another practice together again. Simple yeah. at the end of class, you can say it however comes out naturally. Yes. So people know where to find you. Uh, if you're offering a workshop or you're teaching not in a studio space somewhere else, um, what else you're offering mm. is the time after class or just before class is the perfect time yes. to mention it. And people will be more receptive, more receptive than potentially if they're looking at a website you're going to get, be able to answer any questions they have as well mm. and reach your student base, which is what marketing is all about. <laughs> yeah, word of mouth is so powerful. And we often say at Warrior One that your check-in and your check-out is as important as the class. It's that connection point that you have with your students that makes them keep coming back, right? Mm. Like often I feel yoga studios and a lot of businesses, we're competing against people's time. You know, what's going to get them off the couch watching Netflix into the studio to your class. Um, and that can often be that they know, you know, last week you said, hey, next week we're going to do this chakra. Yeah. Or next week we're going to do this. And so that it's inspired them. They're kind of invested in that weekly class. So mm. that communication to your students about what you're teaching, when you're teaching is so vital. Yeah. Speaking about what you're going to be teaching the next week, it puts your class front of mind for people next week. One of our teachers, Megan, and Megan is like our teacher coordinator, Yes, uh, always says, um, you know, I will see you next week, which we love. <laughs> yeah, we love. She And like, if you're in class and she's like, I will see you next week, <laughs> you see lots of people respond to it. They're like, yes, you will. Yeah. They love it. <laughs> So yeah. try, try it, you know, yeah. see, see the response that you get. Yeah, well, we all know the value of a regular yoga practice, right? Mm -hmm. The more yoga you do, the better you feel mentally, physically, emotionally. So it is such a beautiful practice and it's just getting people to commit to that regular practice because people are busy. So as much as you can talk about your classes, your offerings when they're in front of you, it's just really fantastic. Mm. So that is our really three most potent, powerful tools that we think grow studio classes, build your, your numbers, build your numbers. Everybody loves teaching in a full class. It mm. feels so lovely to have a full room of people that are breathing and growing together. So we hope that you've enjoyed them. Yeah.